welcome you to Vacation Bible School here at Christian Bible Church. And our theme this week is the armor of God. And our opening song is going to be the sharpest blade. So grab your sword and join us as we sing about the word of God is the sharpest Ephesians 6, 13, and 16 through 17. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Attention, get in line, rookie, and get in formation, because now we're at virtual VBS and we're on our fifth piece of the armor of God. Why do we need armor? Because we're in a battle. What do you have in a battle? You have a sword. And we've got a sword here today, and the sword in the spiritual armor of God is the Word of God, otherwise known as the Scriptures or the Bible. Now, the Word of God is important. And it's something that the Spirit uses for us and with us. And you'll need it just like a soldier to defend yourself from attack or the Word of God as a sword is something you can attack the devil with. And you'll need this in your walk of faith. So today's armor is the sword and it goes in your hand. You're going to use the Word of God all through your life in your spiritual journey. Here are some Bible verses that talk about the Word of God. The Bible says, the Word of the Lord is pure. We're always wanting to find something that's pure, something that's not contaminated. That's the Word of God, pure. 
Another verse says we should be witnesses and servants of the word. So the word is important in our lives every day. Another one that's important, the word of God, which is your sword, is alive and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Swords are sharp on the edges, and they cut flesh and penetrate. But the word of God, the scripture, is sharper than a sword. It goes into the very heart of a person and changes their lives. Another verse says, blessed are those who hear the word of God and obey it. That's important, that last part. A lot of people hear the Bible verses, the word of God, but they don't obey it. So blessed are the people who hear it and obey it. The word of God endures forever. It's not going to be here today and gone tomorrow. The Bible says the word of God is going to last forever. That's something we can count on. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away, but the word of God will never pass away. Again, it's here to stay. It's something you can count on today and tomorrow. The word of God is flawless. All your words are true. Have you ever found something that's perfect? Probably not. There's always some flaw or something quite not right with it. But the word of God is flawless. No mistakes. It's pure. It's correct. It's something you can count on. The word of God is living and enduring. It's alive and it endures all the conflict and tribulations that will come to a believer. And finally, the Bible says, live your life according to the word of God. So the Word of God is our instruction manual. Rookie, you have to have some kind of book to live by. That's the book you want to count on and base your life on, the Word of God. So this is an important piece of the armor. Again, it's defensive or it's offensive. And we're fighting against the devil and his schemes. And so put on your armor and use your sword well. What can take away all of our sin? privilege of sharing the gospel message with you today, which is what we call the good news. And I'm going to be using this cube to illustrate the good news to you today. Now, this light represents God. 
God is perfect, he's holy, and he's without sin. God loves us so much, and he wants us to have everlasting life and a relationship with him. But our sins must be removed in order to have eternal life with God. This figure represents every person like you and me. See this darkness surrounding this person? It represents our sin. Sin is anything God tells us not to do. The Bible in Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Our sin separates us from God. God loved us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to earth. God sent Jesus to die on a cross to pay for our sins with his blood. He took our sins in his body on the cross so that we could come to God. The Bible says in John 3:16, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Another Bible verse I want to share with you is Romans 5, 8. God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. After Jesus died, men buried Jesus in a tomb, and then they rolled a huge stone in front of it. Soldiers even guarded the tomb. God sent an angel to roll away the big stone, and God raised Jesus from the dead. Jesus didn't stay dead. He came back to life because he's God's son. He was resurrected. Soon after Jesus came back to life, God did take Jesus back to heaven to live with him. You see, Jesus has paid the price for our sin and Jesus conquered death. Jesus is the only way we can come to God. Jesus says in the Bible, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Through Jesus, we can be forgiven for all our sins and be with God forever. But just knowing these things is just not enough. We must choose to put our faith in Jesus, to trust in him to save us from our sin. If you do not take the step of trusting in Jesus, then your sins are not removed. The Bible says that whoever believes in Jesus has eternal life and is not judged. But whoever does not believe in Jesus has been judged already, and the wrath of God remains upon him. The penalty for sin is death, but eternal life through Jesus is a free gift from God. What choice will you make? Will you trust in Jesus Christ to be forgiven and have eternal life? Or reject Jesus Christ and suffer eternal punishment in hell? The Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's in Romans 10, verse 9. Pray to God, asking him to forgive you and tell him you believe that his son Jesus died on a cross to pay for your sins. Tell him you believe that Jesus was raised from the dead. Tell him that you have faith in Jesus as your Savior. Thank him and pray in Jesus' name.
if you do decide to be a Jesus Christ follower, love God and all people. Study the Bible, which is God's holy word. Pray to God constantly. Meet with other Christians and learn and encourage each other. And tell others the good news about Jesus. John 3.16 says something extremely important that every person in the world needs to know. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life.